Well, hello. Is your sewing machine feeling rather tired, perhaps lacking the get up and go? Not feeling like it used to? Seems heavy going? Well, I've got one here and it's, it's actually a lovely machine. It's a Singer 201 and in this film I'm just going to give you a couple of hints and tips as to what I'm going to do to try and get this sorry one going. It's a beautiful machine. It's in lovely condition. It's just that it's not got, as I use it, it's not got the sort of happy, it's clunking and it's not sort of going like a nice sort of smooth purry noise. So I'm going to actually give it a bit of oil. I'm, I am amazed at how I get these old machines sometimes and people just don't oil the poor things. And this one's definitely a case in point. But it's a lovely stitch quality on these. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's being a bit churny. The stitching's good, so there's nothing majorly wrong with it at all. It's a lovely 1956 machine. But um, what I find with a lot of them is the belt actually gets worn. This has one of the original belts, the sort of these section type belts on it. What you can do is, and I have, <laughs> just go and bought one of the cheap poly band belts. And these are actually perfectly adequate and um, you're better replacing your belt often and putting one of these on than having it with an old belt because it slips and it doesn't bite nicely. So that's the first thing I'll do is pop a new belt on and then I'm going to oil the thing and I'll show you how, why I feel it needs oiling and where I tend to oil them. Let's get going. <laughs> Here's my machine, it's lovely actually, lovely quality. Um, good for leather work actually, I will do a separate film on what these can and can't do. They're very limited, but they are very good with very lightweight leather. So I'll pop something up, and if you want very fine stitch quality, it is reputed Rolls-Royce used them. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, it's got the usual strap-on motor on the back there, and this is the belt. So first thing I'm gonna do is loosen off the motor, get that belt off, and put the new one on. switch it off. It's really easy this, you just undo it and then you can jiggle it around and get the belt off. Now this belt, yeah, you immediately see for a lot of the reason why it was clunking is actually missing most of its outer bit. So that's sort of a section of what it should look like and it's just missing a whole lot here. Hopefully you can just about get that on camera. Let's boost up the lights. There you are. So I'm gonna put the other belt on. This is actually an original belt. It's a nice belt, but it's just totally worn out. So somewhere I put my band belt down. Here it is, <laughs> being crushed by a machine. So it's really easy over the flywheel, it's just a little bit of a struggle, push it down into its groove, push it the machine around this way, so it's on the wheel, the pulley bit is just in a tad, so I need to get that over, it's quite a close tight fit everywhere, that's it there, it's in the pulley groove now, it's just in there, and get it onto the motor. So, if loosen the motor mounting, I can slide the motor up and put it on. And then you can, whoops, push the motor down a bit. Want a bit of flex on the band, but not so you're really straining those motor bearings, it's sort of hitting a bit of a balance. Something like that, I think they'll do it. Tighten up the mounting, and that's the new belt on. So that's a lovely, easy, quick thing, and that will make a huge difference. It won't slip, it won't make as much noise, it'll be a lot happier. Now, I'd like to show you this end first. 
take that cover off. Have a look in here. So this is a needle rod and all the mechanism that raises and lowers the needle and the foot etc. And this is absolutely bone dry. It's lovely and clean. I don't think it's been used much at all. But look, there's grease on there and it's not shifting. And this, I rub my finger on it. And it's coming off pretty well bone dry. Poor machine. So, it's just crying out for a bit of oil. And as it happens, I have some Singer oil. I mean, any light three-in-one type oil will be fine on this. And just get it on every single pivot point. Turn the wheel, the hand wheel. And you actually have got some oil reservoirs as well. I'm going to do this quite liberally because I quite like to have it work in a good bit. Quite a few little reservoirs you can tuck it onto, put a bit around there. Ideally, just look for these little oil reservoir holes and give it a turn. Bit more on there. I'll carry on just trying to work it in. You'll find the holes sort of drilled into the machine body, and if you just squirt some oil down those, this one, as I say, it's so desperate for some oil. I've turned it back on. Let's try and work the oil in a bit. Yeah, cotton out, shouldn't I? Just noticed actually, this is loose. So running it, I'm just going to tighten that, that will stop that clunking. Let's go for a razor lower. Let's try and work it in a bit. I'm going to put a bit more on. I don't want to go too liberal because you end up with it all over the fabric, but equally on a lever. This is so lacking, poor thing. Right, next place I'm going to have a look at is under this cover the main bearing. Oops. Again, I have switched the machine back off again. And in there, again, the poor thing looks totally dry. So I'm going to put more oil in here and you can help it turn it over by hand. You can put the whole oil down those holes. You can just see it's completely dry everywhere. It's already feeling a bit different as I turn it over. If you have any trouble seeing, just use a torch. And I mean, I've got one of these um, slim neck ones as well, which is quite useful. You can make sure then you're not missing any bits. And I've just been turning the machine over by hand all the time. Try and work it all in a good bit. Go along the top here. Pop something down here. My next port of call is to undo the little latch and take a peep underneath. Ah, no, quite a lot of my oil is now piling through, which is good. It's quite a bit of dust down here. I'm going to hoover it to try and get rid of some of this dust and then I'll oil under here. So that's the next little job. So we've got Henry de Hoover here. There's a huge amount of debris and dust just below the bobbin area. And it's obviously because people have been sewing and there's a hole there, the dust comes down. And I am in a minute going to probably take out the lower bobbin carrier, because I think it's rubbing a bit there. But I'll just give a bit more hoovering and then I'll oil some of these areas. On quite a few of these machines, you'll find 
various like covers that you can remove. And again, I mean, this is just totally dry. <laughs> it's amazing how dry it is. So I'm just going to wipe off the excess dust. You can hear it squeaking actually. And again, get some more oil into there. While I'm down here, I'm going to oil all the other moving bits as well. This machine won't know what's hit it. There we are. There are quite a lot when you start looking around. I mean, if you have the manual, you can obviously check them out in that as well. Now, as there was a lot of dust in here and um, the thing hadn't been maintained with oil, I'm going to take out the bobbin carrier. This is a little bit of a sort of techie thing where there are two little springs. Let me zoom in. This always looks a bit more sort of fearsome. I think than it actually is. So take off the plate here. Engineering on these things is lovely. I mean, they're just built like tanks. They're relatively simple machines and um, the quality is fantastic. They used to cost a lot actually to buy. Um, it's something like eight weeks of a typical average person's salary to buy one of these. Yeah, I need to put the hoover in at the top here as well, get more dust out. But there are two little springs. So if you go for the blunter end there, I've just put a screwdriver in a little slot to release that spring. Just there. So that's the little spring I've released. And once you've got that one out, you can usually slide it. You may need to take one out the other side. So the, the one the other side is just there. And I'll just see if I can ease that off as well. Yeah, it's coming off. Bring that back. And you should find you can just about lift this out so up it's coming you have to watch out when you do this because there's a little bit of triangular metal that hooks into the um, underside of the dog of the feed dog just there when you put it back you need to make sure that goes back in can't get this out may need to push it around a bit it's coming yeah it's out it's got actual gubbins and corrosion almost it's not corrosion but it's debris of fabric and stuff under here no oil at all there you are lift out the bobbin carrier itself and again it's quite clean actually I will give it a proper clean. So there's debris there, you see, bits of fluff off the cotton thread, off whatever's being made. So it's worth giving all of this a good old clean and get all of that out. And it's dust galore in there. I'm going to hoover this next, and then I'm going to get some little q tips and give it a clean. Quite a lot of dust flew out there, which was good. And now I'm just going to give it a scrub. You can immediately see there's quite a lot of debris there and there's no oil. Oh, I see. 
you can see what I'm doing. So try and get in here. This is quite an important part because the hook, the sewing hook rotates in this and if it's not oiled it will wear out and also it will be all sort of clunky, a bit like this one is. So you don't want the debris because that just ends up acting like a, almost like an abrasive. So out it all comes and it's worthwhile you're at it if there's any other bits of loose debris or dust try and get them out give it all a nice good old spring clean you can then pop a bit of oil in I put too much in there but you can sort of wash it with the oil to a fair extent. Try and get any of this crud off. So I'm sort of like scrubbing it. And at the same time, get it nice and clean and get that oil along that groove where the shuttle hook rotates. There we are. Right, that's a lot, lot happier than it was. A bit of a clean around there while I'm down there. Same sort of thing as the actual shuttle hook. Give it a good old scrub round. Try and get all the debris out. Want to be a bit more careful not to get oil in the wrong places here because you're obviously getting very close to the actual sewing areas. But I am going to give this channel a nice feed with some oil. need to be a bit careful not to put more debris on with the or fibre on with this um, q-tip. Right, a little bit of oil underneath it, wipe the excess off and go back in. Now when you put it back in, that, that little hook there, it's got to hook into a little plate underneath here. There we are, is in. Just drop it in. But it does need a register and a little recess for it. It'd be similar with a lot of machines that. You know when you got it in because it suddenly feels right. Okay, that's in. I then need to get this cleaned up and back in as well. So same procedure with this. Try and get this stuff off. If need be, very gently get that abrasive stuff off just by scraping it. Oops, it is coming. There we are. And just make sure when you're finished that you're leaving it all lovely and smooth. So you can slide around to its heart's content. No other obvious debris in there. Okay. I need to get this back in. So when you're popping it back in, you've got to Bit. 
when you're popping it back in you've got that hook put it over that side you got like a blunt end on this which goes under this side and it's this that locks it all down sometimes you can push them back in it's going to work sort of side yep so that's gone underneath there which is good that needs to come home sort so of things always a bit fiddly I've now got a slightly finer screwdriver and that's enough just to press that out and get that back in yeah we are pushed in and that's now seated nicely other side a little spring is also seated nicely and that's turning quite happily so I'm pleased with that I've just seen as I lift as the foot comes up there's a whole lot of dust under there let's get that out right that was obviously pressed down when I was hoovering a bit more dust behind there get that out Kind of situation would be quite nice to have a little blow or something. Okay, that's a bit happier. Right. That is sounding a lot happier. So I'm just checking through with a torch to make sure that I haven't missed oiling any bits. And if in doubt, just a bit more. <laughs> what you find is if it's been well oiled, it will actually start and stop more easily. Yeah, so that's that's definitely starting and stopping a bit happy, more happy. You may have noticed I haven't oiled the motor, and you have to be a bit careful. Some of them, the older motors, have little like spouts where you can apply a special sort of like greasy lubricant, but you do have to be careful because if you use very refined oil, it will just get in the motor and generally make it smoke or do nasty things. So shouldn't need attending to if it's one of the more modern I say modern this is 1956 but it hasn't got the sort of lubricating ports so that's a sealed for life type motor and I think it seems okay actually well the oil will now need to work its way in and I'll need to wipe the excess off but um, I should find now it starts a lot easier and it also runs a lot smoother and actually that seems really happy Just pop this rather thick bit of leather through and just see what it does. It'll struggle a bit, I think. No, it's not bad actually. That's great. That's what I wanted to achieve a nice, happy machine. It gives a very nice stitch. So, um, bit more running in that oil will work its way in even more and that will be a happier happier and happier machine I hope you enjoyed seeing my latest machine say it's a 1956 Singer 201 and I'll probably put another film up sometime showing you the kind of stitching that I can do with this and why I like them for very fine leather work anyway I hope that's been useful and thanks very much for watching bye bye